In today's video, let's make two Shad crankbaits. And this one is a little bit bigger. And it's gonna be a cool Shad crankbait. Let's cut it out. This right here is a very good shape. I like that shape. I'm gonna do this a bigger one off camera now. So right here, I drew out the profiles. Very clean, the tapers. All right, now let's cut them out. There's one all done, all ready to get carved. Now let's do this next one. There we go. Got that one all finished up. All right, now let's get the carbon. We have carved out both of these shad crankbaits they are looking fantastic. I am loving the shape of these. Just loving the shape. So the next part is gonna be sanding this, but right now my brother is in the shop and he's cleaning the shop. So that's why I have my tools outside and everything because he's cleaning in there. But when he's done cleaning up the shop, I will go by my vice and we will get to hand sanding these baits. I'm back and right here are the baits. I sanded them off camera because that's kind of boring. All I'm doing is sand. Oh, there's a big pile of garbage that was under my workbench. And now, if you guys can see the next step, well, I did this guy already. We're doing the bill slats, and it's gonna be an insert lip. And I already started this guy one right here. So what I first do is take, I mark it out with my pencil over there. I mark it out right there. Then I first kind of take my Zacto knife and kind of make a divot. And then I take my Dremel right here with this bit right here. Kind of choose through wood in that. And that right there is how I make the lip insert right there. And we're gonna be using Lexum polycarbonate. 
All right, you're gone. Now what I'm gonna do is lightly, lightly do this. I just do a little bit at a time. So kind of like that. Kind of get the dust out. Well, I don't want to wreck it, so get the dust out and that right there, guys, is a perfect lip hole. Right there. And that's the balls, by the way. And this will be lip. Here's the difference. The big ones on the bottom. Smaller one is there. Same exact spots too, so every equally. So now I'd say guys next up is gonna be carving out um some gills. So I did some drawing and I drilled out the eye sockets. Right here are the eye sockets. I also did some very, very easy gill structure, very easy gill carvings. Cause I want these to be kind of simple. And by the way, I I never really did any carvings with the lures in a while. So this is gonna be kind of neat. And I did that, of course, on both. Your smaller one. Shaboom. Voila! We are all finished with gill carvings. I sanded them roughly. I need to get some lighter sandpaper. I have some 900 grip, but that might be too light. But right here is gill carvings. Just beautiful. Look at that. See how it's 3D? That is so cool. Looks so realistic. So right there we have these two. And I marked the weight placement already. We're going to be using, where's my drill bit? We're going to be using a one and a half inch bit right here. And, and I have my grandpa's drill press. I love that thing. Right here's what I'm using. I'm using bismuth. Non-toxic. This is raw bismuth. And this right here is like, one and a half pounds of it. And look at how thin it is. Whoa. And it's probably not smart to do this on your wood workbench, but I don't want to do it outside because then I won't get a good camera angle. It's all about the camera angles. big guy first there you go there's big guy let's do this guy the little one oh gosh do not fall all right there we go i'm sorry i didn't get a good camera angle of that but there's a lot going on when you pour hot metal and i don't want to burn myself i don't I don't have any gloves on me right now, so. But yeah, right there is the weight. And look, it's already solid, but do not touch that. I've been there. All right. So right here is gonna be the lips. Right there, this one's for the bigger one, that one's for a smaller one, and we're gonna see the action in that versus smaller one versus bigger lip. So right here's the small one. 
I sanded it, put screw knives in it, filled the weight holes. It looks bad right now, but um, when you seal it in that and clear coat it and paint it, it's gonna be good. Plus it's pretty smooth, it's just the weird color. I use super glue and wood dust. Alright, right here's the first bait. I put a hand tied treble hook that I tied. Some cool feathers. And uh, yeah, right here's the shad. Put some hooks on it. It's all sealed up. All sealed up. I didn't film that because that's another boring part of lure making seal in the wood. But we got the bill in there too. It's a nice small bill. And now let's go test this out. Let's see if I can show you this. But it runs perfectly. See that? All right, let me try to hold my hand, hold my rod and reel. See that? And then see the treble hook wiggle in the back? That is perfect. All right, right here's the big one. Um, I kind of already tested it out. Um, see the feathers are wet. But inside of the feathers, see that right there? That flashy stuff? That actually glows in the dark. So this bait glows in the dark. So you can fish this at night and the tail lights up, which I think that's pretty awesome. As you can see, it sits on the top perfectly. No leaning. The feathers poof out. For this guy, I'm gonna do a chartreuse line. Let's do this. Hope you guys can kind of see. See the line right there, chartreuse. Now what we're gonna do is take some wicked plat hole green. Plat hole green, something like that. We got some stripage. All right, there we go. Let me show you guys what I just did there. So right there is what it's looking like so far. 